What's going on guys, it's Brandon again, and today I'm bringing you a new War Thunder video, but before we get started, I would like to thank a special someone, I would like to thank Fly Daily for liking my video, as a smaller channel, it's nice to see the aces of the skies, I guess you could say, like your video, it makes me, it only gives me a sense that my channel's moving in the right direction, and I'm putting out the right content, you know. But anyway guys, let's go ahead and jump right into this. We are taking a look at using a joystick and head tracking for someone who has never used it before, like myself. However, you will end up getting agitated, angry, and ask yourself, why did I put my money into this? But all you have to remember is it's a new experience, it's a new piece of hardware, and everyone starts at the same level, so we'll begin moving into my first thoughts about the joystick and head tracking controls, as well as the methods I've been using to get me into this and get squared away so let's go ahead and jump right into this now the mistake that I made when first going into this I just kinda went into it headstrong and didn't really think about anything else I just kinda plugged it in one of the options and hey we're ready to go well this is what happens when you don't read into it you go into a turn your plane rolls all over and you go straight in the ground pile driving it while your friend looks at you and laughs so yeah don't do what I did so what you wanna do is just go into a test flight tweak the controls for a specific plane that you like. Go through the planes, first test it with your joystick, see which planes you like, and you know, once you find a plane that you love and all that, adjust the joystick to your needs, and maybe I'll go through that in another video, I'll do the statistics, so, I mean, not statistics, but the uh, tweaks I did for, say, the XP-38. And this is actually my second attempt right here, I'm, you know, getting a feel for it, moving back and forth, and, you know, it starts, starts working out a bit better. But, anyway, one thing you want to make sure about is you're in the nation of your choice while doing this. All the nations have their different reactions to the joystick, it seems like, and America's reaction to the joystick is the worst I've ever seen in any of the nations. All the planes for America's, whether it be the P-51, the Thunderbolt, I don't think bombers have this problem because I've, I've flown them a few times with the joystick, they're pretty fun, but they still do kind of roll, but whether it be the P-51 Dauntless or you know, Thunderbolt or the P-39, they all have issues with this. If you pull too far back on the stick while rolling, your plane will go into a death spiral, and you'll have one hell of a time trying to pull out of it. And it happened to me quite a few times, but it's just something that you got to get used to. So a country, if you don't want this problem, a country that doesn't have a problem with this is, say, Japan. Their planes are just so maneuverable that their planes don't have a tendency to roll, which is really nice. Now just remember guys, I love flying American planes in this game, so I mainly stick to those and I try to I try to use them to my greatest ability. So if you hear me saying something that might not be true to you and it is reacting differently for your joystick, because every joystick is different of course, then please go ahead and tell me. I'd like to know if I'm just crazy or if the American planes are bugged and have a tendency to roll over every time that I go into a turn, because I am really curious. I looked on the forums, I saw that some people said that they were somewhat bugged and others saying that they weren't. You just gotta get used to it, so I'd rather not sound like I'm talking out my ass or anything. <laughs> Now, moving on to the head tracking, it involves a new level of immersion for a person who hasn't used it before. I will leave you a link to the software I use in the description, but using a joystick head tracking combo is a must-have for joystick users, especially if you're running three monitors. It's just absolutely brilliant being able to look around and, you know, look in between each monitor and you're looking around, looking up the sky, scanning for enemies. But anyway, now when flying in cockpit view with head tracking, you will learn how crucial visibility actually was to the pilots in World War II. When I was flying the Corsair 1C, I felt like I was one of those cats who, you know, stuck their head into a toilet paper tube and tried desperately to get out and look around. That's why I moved over to the XP-38. It was fast. It doesn't have a lot of maneuverability, you know, but I could at least see I could look around with the head tracking. I didn't feel like I was you know, had tunnel vision just looking one way. And not seeing behind you is, is I didn't realize how much of a major issue it was. I guess, I guess when you're flying a 1C and going up against the Japanese, I guess they didn't really count on Japs getting behind them and having the pilot look around. They just intended for the guy to get out of there. No, but I'm sure there's a reason why the cockpit's like that. Just remember, planes are all personal preference when it comes to your play style. I mean, some people could be, man, how often do I actually have a guy on my tail and like a more visible frontal cockpit of a plane so they can go down and boom and zoom. Or maybe somebody likes a plane with maneuverability like the Japanese have or the Spitfires for the British or something along those lines that will give them a really good uh, combination for, you know, the joystick and head tracking. Just remember, guys, use all the game modes to your disposal. I mean... 
you can go into custom battles and practice. That's what I did. I went into test flight. I set up my own event for the plane, you know, so I could go in there and test around, shoot, shoot down bots, and stuff along those lines. It really helps if you're going up against bots or another player in like custom battles where it's not so serious but at the same time you can practice with it or even practice with a th friend like here you see my friend Nathan he's always buzzing around me we're all always helping each other out and when you have that wingman next to you you always have a sense that you know you always have backup in case you screw up with the joystick you know it's not like life or death situation 24 7 so it's also another thing just to help the immersion help you get used to the joystick and even getting shot up like I am right here by the V-17 is also really great. It helps you gain control of the plane, helps you move along with it. Well, anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video for the most part. I know later on down the line, maybe tomorrow or somewhere around there, I will go into a video and I will go probably into a test flight and I'll set up the joystick controls. I'll show you how I set them up for say my XP-38 or for the Spitfire for that matter. Just any plane. I'll go, I'll probably use the XP-38 since that's what I mainly fly. And I'll show you exactly what I did to set it up, all the little tweaks and all the little gadgets, doodads in there, so you know how to per perfectly get that uh, plane moving so, you know, you can get kills. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope I was somewhat informative in how I felt and how I've been getting used to it. But anyway, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks again to Fly Daily for getting my video out there and... Uh, liking it so people could see it. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. And my name is Brandon, and as always, have a nice day.